<clears throat> okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is probably going to be a long video here. What I'm going to go through is all the photos I took at this event I was at uh, yesterday. Um, what it was, it was, well, it was a confusing one. I didn't really know what I was meant to be shooting. It was kind of a hairdressing salon event thing with a bit of a fashion and a charity thing going on at the same time. Uh, so anyway, I went along, took all my gear and uh, took some photos of everything. So what I'm going to show you is my kind of workflow, which I do after a photo shoot. Um, here, I think I shoot primarily in RAW, did it with my Canon, uh, with my Nikon 550, no, my Nikon D300 and my Fuji S5 Pro and I did some video with Canon 550D. Uh, the video I'm not going to do just now, that'll be a different video. Um, but the photos just now, I'm going to go through them all um, and just show you what my kind of process is from here. So anyway, once I've uploaded the photos onto my computer, they all get opened up in Lightroom. Um, as it was all pretty much raw files, I did, uh, I've got, if you look down here, you can see I've got 557 images from the day. So I really don't want to, have to edit that. So what I do is the first thing I do is go through them all and press the P button, P, P for Patrick. Um, and that means you pick that photo. So for example, this photo here, no, not interested in it at all. There, there are a lot of them were test shots at the start. Let me just get this image as big as possible. No, no. Okay, you get to see the actual room, but is anybody interested in that? No, it's nice and quiet. It's a cool club, uh, the GHQ in Edinburgh. That's showing some of the stuff that was on sale that people might want to see some of that. Some rude words on there. Uh, no, nothing, nothing. That's some of the hairstylists that were there. Getting ready for the people to come along. That was some of the soap that was on sale. Uh, 15 pounds, I want to show that. Yeah, I'll keep that. That one looks a bit better. Ah, now this was the most dangerous soap in the whole entire world because the soap that they were selling looks exactly like chocolate sweeties or cakes or lollipops or everything. Um, and it smelled delicious as well. So definitely keep a couple of those shots. Oh yeah, looks good. And that was the name of the company. Granny Sally's Soap Kitchen, very, very good one. And th these were in raw, so actually you can see here, the colour here looks a bit rubbish. Um, what I will do after I've picked all my images is I will probably work on the white balance. So here, it really just isn't actually a white. Ugh, I suppose the walls are meant to be white. And then it seems to be a purple coming down. Don't like that, need to definitely work. Ah, that looks a bit closer. Definitely need to work on the white balance uh, of these pictures. But that's after I've picked it. So will I keep that one? Yeah, I'll probably keep that one. No, 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 no. That was one of the hairdressers. Uh, okay, do I like that one? I like that one. I like that one more. Oh, that was nicer. In action, laughing shots. Uh, that was one of the brothers of the soap kitchen. Yep, yep. Uh, now this shot, this was uh, with off-camera flash here and on-camera flash. Um, I don't like having that big shadow in the background, so I'm not keeping that one or that one. But I did like this one. This one, exactly the same, uh, it, but I just changed the shutter speed to 350, oh no, a 500th of a second. Uh, f4.8, 28 millimeters, ISO 800, um, and that was off camera flash uh, shooting into the little Orbis, um, not uh, Orbis, into the little Interfits beauty dish at the side. I'll show you. So, yeah, for all these off camera portraits, I was just walking around with my Nikon SB900 and just effectively putting the Beauty dish, the tiny little beauty dish that you get from the Interfits uh, stroby kit or something, and just doing a photo, kind of like that, bringing it very close into the face. Just having like that, just walking around all day with that in my hand, and I hold, just kind of holding it with my fingers, because um, otherwise it falls off. Um, but it, it just kind of like sits on there with the the, the uh, Omni Bounce diffuser bit there. So yeah, that's that's all these photos were done with. And as you can see, the beauty dish gives a lovely look in the eye where you've got that brilliant little circular catch light. 
So anyway, really like that one. Like how it's got kind of a natural vignette. So definitely a pick on that one. Uh, that was one of the makeup artists from a place called Miss Dixie Bells. Uh, kind of in action. That was one of the girls that were selling some clothes there. And then here, so again, shutter speed, a 60th of a second here or a 350th of a second. And the difference is uh, when you go beyond the six speed, the flash on the camera has absolutely no effect whatsoever. And it really is just all off camera flash. Um, but she was a little bit out of focus. So she's a little bit blurry, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not going for that one. That one's really kind of spooky. Let's just quickly see what it would be like with a bit of light fill. We would take the darks down. And bring the exposure up just a touch. Yeah, that kind of works a bit better. Bring the clarity down by about 30% just so it smooths out the skin. Uh, and yeah, that looks a bit better. Let's see what it was like from before and after. Before and after. There is just a little button down at the bottom there. Uh, yeah, kind of like that one. Both kind of moody and kind of, kind of something interesting going on there. But anyway, anyway, what am I doing? I uh, meant to just be back to the actual picking of the photos rather than anything else. Oh, that's the one I like. I like that one more. Pick. Uh, that was one of the girls getting her hair done. She was very funny. She was having a good laugh. Uh, yeah, there. Again, showing you the difference from a f 1 45th of a second, uh, where the flash on the camera, because it's fairly slow, that will affect the image. Uh, and you can see it kind of fills in the shadows, so it's good. It gives a kind of more natural, well, maybe not so much natural, but more balanced light all over her. Even though you've got these great catch lights. Here you can see the catch light of the ring flash in the eye there, and then the flash on the camera. But once you go up to 350th of a second, you see no flash from the camera whatsoever. But it is a lot darker, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, so the shadows are definitely there. There you can see it's almost kind of like loop lighting that she's got on her face there. Um, but good catch lights, happy about that. Because she's further away from the background, the shadow of her, which is actually back here, uh, is much less obvious at a uh, 45th of a second. So it, it, it gives and take. I kind of like them both. I'll keep that one. Uh, maybe not that one. Oh, yeah, that one where she had a little bit more of a smile. That was cute. Uh, that was some strange mannequin that was there, uh, working on some Rembrandt lighting on himself. As you can see, the Rembrandt. So what we've got here is we've got broad lighting on the mannequin, and it's kind of broad and Rembrandt because he's got the kind of triangle shot over here. Uh, that's just something which I might do that in the future. Uh, the idea of short lighting, broad lighting, Rembrandt, loop lighting, paramount lighting and butterfly lighting and all that kind of stuff. I think some of them are interesting. Um, so that might be a future future video. Um, okay, uh, so, um, so just kind of getting shots of them in action doing their work. Yeah. This one I thought was quite cute. This was a girl, she was getting her hair done as well in this nightclub. Uh, and that was her just looking into the mirror. But the ISO, oh god, far too high. 3,000 200 uh, up there, f2.8 and a 90th of a second. Uh, and that gave me pretty much the still is a fairly underexposed image, uh, but it's good on her face, so that, that's the main kind of thing. I thought that was kind of sweet. Uh, I like that one. And then that was her just getting hair done. And then, so this is a kind of a before and after shot. Again, showing you the difference of having a slower and faster shutter speed whenever you're using on camera and off camera flash. If you look here very carefully, you can see. The catch lights in her eye, Interfit Beauty Dish, this over here, and the little flash on the actual camera, which is communicating with the uh, SB900 in the Beauty Dish. Um, and if we go to the next picture, there it looks much better. You can't see any reflection in uh, her eye from the actual camera. So I like that one a bit more. So it's kind of meant to be like a before and after. I'll go for that one, I like that one more. And uh, this is a kind of burlesque person in Edinburgh called Dolly Tartan. Uh, she's selling some nipple tassels, uh, like that one. Uh, one with a bit more colour in it. So here uh, we're shooting at a 60th of a second, and before we're shooting at 180th of a second. So the slight difference there is that there's more ambient light coming in, and it kind of warms her up a little bit. But remember, the warmth we can totally change with the white balance later on. So I'll pick that one. Then uh, just getting shots of kind of all the stuff that's happening. So here you've got a hairdresser, hairdresser, a makeup artist, and two girls getting 
their hair done, so that's pretty good. And their hair getting done was really impressive. It was very amazing, the detail that went into the hair. Because um, it's kind of a 1920s to 1960s style um, that they're working on. Uh, and it's, it's much more than just hairdos. It's, or, well, it's not just hair cutting, it's really hair dudes. Uh, and yeah, some more shots there. I was just after she had finished getting her hair done. I like that one. Cheeky smile. Uh, <laughs> mid action shot just as she was about to smile. Uh, again, there is a girl getting her hair done. She's kind of cute. Uh, just some random shots. Oh, I so far too high, much better down at 500. Okay, here. So this was, off, again, off-camera flash, really just holding it way off to the right. So it's giving me a good light on her, but the camera hasn't focused on her very well. So unfortunately, not keeping that one. Okay, uh, yeah, and just look at the detail that's gone into the back of her head. All that hair, all perfectly placed, it's very impressive. So I've got a couple shots of the hair going on there. That might be interesting for some salon magazines uh, in the future. Uh, and again, there, it's just very impressive. Now this, like this shot here, you've got these kind of slightly distracting stuff in the background. So again, if you just go quickly to develop, increase the blacks, uh, maybe not so much the light fill, but uh, yeah, then all of a sudden you've got a, kind of a more interesting picture. Uh, if you take out that. And then you do maybe the spot reduction for the big orange dot there, the orange dot there, dot there, dot there. Uh, yeah, and now it's kind of like a shot which is just all about the hair. Uh, maybe having the blacks up that high a little bit too much. You just need to get it there. To see what is totally black, you click on this button up here, and everything that is blue is totally black. If it's not totally black, let's say we bring the blacks down to, say, 20%. Uh, or in there. You can see there's a whole bunch of bits which are not totally black. And what you can do is just quickly get the paintbrush and go to exposure, bring it right down to, you know, brightness and exposure down to the bottom and just paint over the bits which are not totally black so that it really becomes an image which is just all about the hair. So that's that done. Take off the blue, or take off the blue highlighting bit showing you what is black uh, and get rid of the brush. And there, there you've got it kind of go in there at all. You've got the light fill up and down, you don't really want to do too much of that, but just that looks really cool, I quite like that. Uh, contrast might bring that down just a touch. Uh, clarity maybe up because it's hair and you kind of like to have really, like if you have it too down it just kind of looks a bit mushy. Uh, but you want to see all the details in the hair, so clarity up, that looks good. Vibrance, mm. If you bring a vibrance down, it looks more of a vintage image. If you bring it up, it looks a bit too kind of pop art. So anyway, just leave that. Anyway, what am I doing? Just maybe picking the images. Right, okay, pick, yes. Uh, then this is a girl, she's just had her hair done. Again, loop lighting there, more almost like Rembrandt. Quite like the catch light in her eye there. She looks very nice. Uh, and it's kind of a spooky image, that, because her head, the top part of her head just disappears into... Uh, into the kind of nothingness. Again, this was shot 350th of a second, so faster than the normal sync speed. Um, like that one, yes. Uh, this one's good as well, but because I think I'm definitely closer and it's kind of warped her face a little bit. So the further away you are, the more straight her face looks. Uh, you've also got this distracting bit in the background here, which can easily be taken out, but I liked the image before. Uh, yeah, quite a nice shot for her, kind of looking down, looking a little bit sombre, that's quite good, and then looking towards the camera, which has given a really cool catch eye, uh, catch light in this eye here, because where the eyeball is a different shape, it's kind of cool, I like that. Uh, again, background stuff, we can get rid of that, so pick that one as well, pick that one. Here's quite cool, it's sharp on this eye, it's soft on this eye, that's just because we're shooting at f 3.3 and a 75mm, so the actual depth of field is tiny. Um, but yeah, as you can see there, it's kind of sharp, round about there. Well, you can see some of the hair that's being chopped still on her face. Um, and then a little bit of smile, I like smile one. That's a cute one. Okay, and then back in some shots of the actual place. That's her stealing money from the charity box. Uh, oh yeah, so here's another bit. In the actual club, um, there is about to be a fashion show going on, so I thought, right, I'll set up my speed lights. So as you can see here, we've got one light over there and a second light over here. Um, and if we, let's say we develop it and we just show you what the actual club looks like. If 
Whew, you can barely see much there. But yeah, got a person there, person there. People were coming out from the back ground there, and these lights were to light up this whole place. Um, but obviously, never going to use that photo, so I'll just ignore that one. Um, and yes, yeah, so get some more shots. Uh, when you're at stuff like this, getting shots of the actual merchandise which is on sale or how it's been laid out so people can see, especially if it's something which might happen again in the future and they want pictures for maybe their Facebook page or their website or something, just so people that have never seen it or heard of it before, they kind of know, ah right, okay, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, so that's some stuff that was on sale and kind of how it's laid out. Uh, again there, yeah, that's fine. And then this is where the uh, fashion show started going on. So the, the clothing was, uh, half of it was charity uh, clothing and it was kind of meant to be vintage style and just kind of a bit crazy stuff. Um, so that was quite cool. Um, again here, they're walking pretty fast. I'm using the Tamron 28-75 millimeter lens, which isn't the fastest focusing, so I'm really having to hope that it gets the right focus. Um, especially as they're walking past quite quickly to me. So there's a lot of these shots which will probably uh, not be in focus. Uh, so, But there, I'm very happy with that. That's really good. Um, as you can see, f3.3, so should be a shallow depth of field, but got her there. And as you can see, the light on her face, I've got the camera in a portrait angle and the flash is going... Uh, I think I had it on the camera at that time, and that was just uh, flashing her with the camera, with, with the flash on the camera. So pick that one, that was good. Uh, here you can see it's pretty slow, because you've got this kind of funny effect of her face kind of moving like that. And you can see, yeah, 1 45th of a second, so there's movement in the image, uh, which is quite cool. Um, and I'll show you, I worked on some of those later on. So yeah, keep that one. There is Abby, uh, she's a burlesque performer in Edinburgh as well, and, and teacher as well. Um, so she was rocking out some <laughs> poses. Uh, yeah, I like that one. There's another one of the girls, totally blurry that one unfortunately. Damn. And again here, so the focus has just got confused about what to do. There, the girl that organised the whole place, Lee, she's kind of blurry but yet people in the background are in focus. So that's where the camera's just, you know, I'm spinning around in circles, can barely see anything. Um, so will I pick that one? No, so unpick uh, that one. Next one, that was one of the girls that was there, that was modeling, uh, wearing a lovely t-shirt saying something head, don't know what that says, oik head maybe? I don't know. Uh, again, that's quite cool. It's showing you the, the kind of fashion action going on with the hairdressing in the background and the, the amount of people there, so it's looking nice and busy. So that's good. I like that one, although on her, she's really not in focus. But again, maybe if it's just for a Facebook picture or for a small icon on a website, no one's really going to see that that much. Uh, so yeah, I'll pick that one. I like that one. You can see also up at the top, the light here, that's from my flashes, which I'd set up around the room, uh, just lighting up the, the ceiling there. Uh, so there, oh, and that's obviously a lot more flash going on. There is a bit more movement uh, with Abby walking past. Again, with the light in the foreground. Don't like that one because you've got this pretty naff air conditioning unit there. So not using that. Uh, and okay, so then we st I started doing some shots with some of the models that had been doing the the walking. Uh, these were all girls that were doing it. Uh, they're part of a, a group called Electric Circus in Edinburgh, or Creative Electric. Creative Electric. Electric Circus is a karaoke place. And then anyway, so here is some shots with one of the girls that was helping out. Um, and uh, so again, working with the off-camera uh, Interfit Beauty Dish uh, and the SB900. And just having the camera communicate with that, pretty much everything was on TTL. I wasn't changing the settings on the flash manually in any way. So it was really to look at the kind of hair and the clothing that she was wearing. So this was like a vintage army clothing, uh, which was, oh my God, look at how shallow the depth of field is there. The front of that bit of jacket is in focus, meanwhile everything behind it is not. Uh, so ISO 800, on the D300, 800 is absolutely fine, like that is a big picture I'm seeing there. Uh, if you look carefully at her eye though, you can see uh, two catch lights and you can see also a little bit more in the background there. Let's see, can we get even closer? Yeah, you can see kind of reflections in the background and everything. Uh, so that's cool, but yeah, one eye in focus, another one a little bit mushy, just cause it was at f3.3 uh, and is obviously pretty close to her. Um, do I like that one? Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's got a cool background. It could do with being cropped. And then here, uh, obviously completely changing the shutter speed so it's faster. Uh, so look at the difference. Shadow on the background, no shadow in the background. Shadow, no shadow. Um, portrait way, I hold my camera in a funny angle. Hold on. 
So whenever I hold my camera, I hold it with my right hand, because obviously you've got your shutter button here. But a lot of people I'll see, they'll be shooting like that. And where that's good is then the flash bit here, if you're right-handed, if you've got an off-camera flash, then this is definitely going to reach the sensor of the flash. The sensor of the flash being this tiny little black bit here. So if you have your flash around the right direction, and you're shooting like that, then it's a direct link from here to the, the flash. But I shoot like this, I find it much more comfortable having your flash and your camera like this, because you're the weight is down, coming down, instead of you having to hold your arm up. Whenever I'm doing shoots like this, I just find my shoulder get absolutely knackered. Um, and I'm usually always using it one hand. If not, I would be using it two hands and holding it like that. Obviously, with the front bit off. But yeah, so that's where you can see how there's the, the strong flash uh, shadow coming over to the other side of the person. So here, this shot's fine. Unfortunately, it's got her hair is kind of coming over her face. So we won't go with that one. Uh, I like that one, that was kind of spooky. Again, this is a very strong example of loop or loop lighting. Loop is lighting is when you've got this big kind of loop from the shadow on the nose. And as you can see, that's a big loop. Um, I'm not usually a big fan of loop lighting because it can be a little bit distracting. Uh, but here's quite cool because it's like a girl, looks old fashioned, she's very pretty, she's got lovely blonde hair, but she's got this army coat on. Look kind of old fashioned. You've got something going on in the background. It might be good to take that bit out. I I like that one. I like that. That's good. And she's more in focus as well. I think I'm just a little bit further away. Again, shot of her hair. I think she was laughing. I was trying to get her to do some more modeling poses where it's like, okay, relax your face and don't smile and all that kind of stuff. Um, but no, she, she was a good laugh at the event there. Uh, again, oh damn, just uh, out of focus. That's kind of cool, blurry though. I quite like that one. Uh, but nobody used that one. Uh, again, closer, that's good. Unfortunately, it's now just too dark around it. It is just a random head popping out of a sea of blackness. Uh, the other ones, you can at least see that there was a jacket, like you can see the jacket is there. Uh, maybe if we brought in some fill light uh, in the next shot, where is it? There. If we bring some fill light in here, yeah, you can see there's some jacket there, so that makes it okay. If otherwise, let's take the blacks down, okay, that works. Um, but from where it was, it really was just a random head popping out of nowhere, which is a bit too freaky for me. So uh, because I know I can bring the blacks down and the light fill up just a touch, uh, I'll keep that one because you can still see that there's uh, this vintage army jacket. Okay, now we're trying to do some modeling shots where we have uh, use of the hands. Um, you've probably seen it in one of my previous videos where I've had uh, Katie in the grunge grungy photo shoot, um, where it's just kind of fingers up to the ha up to the face. A lot of the time, if you're working with models, we just don't know what to do or how to pose or anything like that. You've got to give them lots and lots of ideas and direction and just stuff to do with their hands. Because a lot of the time they're like, what do I do? Just do, what What do I do? Do I just look silly? So, so just bring them up, just imagine if they're just going shh uh, with their hands or or if you've got other things that you want them to do or for like a little prayer or stuff like that. Uh, so you can work like that. Uh, anyway, so here we're working on that, but she just cracked up laughing uh, all the time. So we had to go through a few shots. But yeah, it kind of, kind of worked there. I like that one. Oh, that one's kind of cooler. Okay, this is a girl that got her hair done and her hair is amazingly red. Um, yeah, that one looks happy and fun, happy and fun. Uh, get some more shots of the hairdressing going on. Ah, now, so this is where I've got my mate Vincent, uh, who is one of the dancers at a uh, university in Edinburgh. And he runs this kind of dance crew uh, there where I think they go on to like music videos and stuff like that. He, I originally met him from a music video I shot. Uh, or I helped shoot uh, last year, I think, or maybe the year before. And uh, so he was down there, he was helping modeling uh, some of the clothes. I was like, well, there's nothing going on for a wee while. Once, you know, I've shot everyone in the whole place. I thought, right, Vince, let's see if we can get some modeling shots. So I said, get back that army coat on and let's do some kind of funky modeling stuff. And so what I did, the place is pretty cool. It's got kind of a mirrored ceiling. It's got some ready orangey lights around the top. But I thought I'll bring my flashes in as well. So I put a red flash to the right and a blue flash to the left. Well, it was a just normal flashes, but with the little uh, gels on the front, so it was really red and really blue. Uh, and uh, put them behind him. And then on me again, I was just shooting through this. Now, what you're going to be careful with this kind of stuff is that you've got two different groups on your camera settings. 
for your flash. Uh, so the two behind me, they'd be group B for background, and group A would be uh, the one that would be in my hand, because that's number one, A. Even if they're both on TTL, so group A and group B are on TTL, if you have them in different places, it will be a different amount of light that will come from them. So here, uh, you can see it's come out pretty good. I'm happy with that, but he wasn't doing much modeling. Now here, this is when he starts doing his poses. Okay, what you can tell is it's definitely a nightclub, uh, and if we were to, let's go a little bit crazy and really enhance the darks, and then maybe even do some uh, stuff like getting rid of all this crap in the background and crap down the floor, is that down there? It becomes more of just a modeling shot going on. Um, but I'm not gonna do that just now because I'm still just picking. But yeah, I like that one. That one looks pretty, pretty good, so pick. Uh, he was just rocking them out. As you can see, you've got blue light coming here, but you can't see very much of that, and red light on the abs. Uh, and obviously there is still exposure on his face, so that worked out fine. Really loving the, the glare, flare, glare, flare, flare and glare, pretty much I'm getting, uh, from the lights from either side. So And also just these little bits where it's just random bits of colours coming out everywhere. Thought that looks really cool. And even just like on the hair, how you've got red and then blue on the other side. Looks pretty cool. And when we were showing the, the manager of the club as well, he was like, that's, that's really cool. How did you manage to do that? That's one of the biggest enjoyments of flash photography, is that whenever you can take a photo and you can change the whole lighting of the location, then all of a sudden people go, how on earth did you make the photo look like that? And you say, yeah, just a couple of flashes. Three flashes is all I needed uh, to make this kind of cool shot. Unfortunately, camera lost focus there, went mental. Yeah, like that one. Here it looks like the other flashes didn't go off. There's obviously a communication error with them. Uh, but, nah, probably won't go with that one. He's looking a bit too odd in that one. There, he's looking good, lots of cool colours. What you've also got to remember is that red and blue are the worst colours for your camera uh, because they are at the total opposite end of the uh, lighting spectrum. So if you have something which is really red, your camera just doesn't hold that much detail in it. And if it's really, really blue, same thing again. It, it can't hold all that information in it. That's generally why, uh, it's kind of to do with the same with exposures. Your camera wants everything to be roughly in the middle, so it's kind of in the grey area. If it's too dark, you lose too much information. If it's too bright, it's blown out and you lose too much information. It's the same with the colour spectrum as well. If you have something which is really, really red, you know, almost infrared, you obviously can't see that. If you have something which is really, really blue, almost ultraviolet, then your camera can't see that. And the closer they are to those sides, the less information it's able to hold in. And as you can see, just kind of like at the side of his face, it's just blown out. And I don't think that's necessarily because of the brightness, but because of the colour. Anyway, that's a whole different story. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Lord, yeah, that's good. Uh, don't like that one. It looks too small. Don't like that one. Don't like that one. Uh, that one's okay. That one's... Yeah, because he's a dancer, he knows obviously how to pull these poses. Um, that's a good one, I like that one, especially with the face looking down. Looking at the camera, not so much. Face looking down looks good there. Out of focus, yeah, that's good. Out of focus, damn it, out of focus. Yeah, that looks good there. It's kind of cool how there's a little bit of blue on the side of his face and red on another and kind of like purple up in the sky. That's kind of cool. Now, this is where it got confusing because we we're starting to shoot, I thought, right, there's these lovely white um, kind of backgrounds at the seating area. So I thought, right, I'll do the same again, red and blue in the background, give it a cool different colour. And the flash that I had up here, but it just wasn't working, I couldn't figure it out. And that was because uh, the camera was looking at the exposure of the whole place and it was telling the group A not to expose that much because the background was getting overexposed. So I had to quickly change all the settings there just so that I made sure that group A, the one that was in my hand, was like a positive exposure of plus two and the background was just still normal TTL. Um, and then that gave me more of that shot. Um, and yeah, so there it's looking a bit better there. Yeah, it's fine, that's fine. Cool, so at 350th of a second, you, you can see the shadow that's making from behind him, and you've got blue on the right and uh, red on the left. Yes, that's right. Uh, 
But there, that's a good shot. Happy with that one. A little bit of uh, like clarity uh, and maybe skin softening later on, and that will be a nicely shot. Uh, not so much that one, not so much that one, not so much that one. Uh, yeah, like that one. <laughs> yeah, it's been a wee while on these. Uh, blue light, that was pretty much just all blue. It was a little bit of red to the uh, side, didn't really not digging that because I wanted it to kind of look like a hot colour. As you can see, flash is just to the right there and that's giving the strong red colour there. Um, nah, not a big fan, not a big fan. That was kind of cool. That one's a bit better. Uh, now, what we did is we went into a room afterwards. Ah. Uh, and this room had these strobe lights in the uh, all around the walls. But they would change colour. They would go from blue to green to red to something else. Uh, and they would also go off in between. So it was really difficult to get them. So this is exactly the same picture, but just half a second later. Um, so there you see the blue lights, there's no lights. So what I did, first thing I did is I asked uh, Vincent to hold the SB900 and the Interfit Beauty Dish and point it straight towards it. Uh, and with him and the background lights, let's see what I'm shooting at. Shooting at 350th of a second. So again, the flash that's coming off my camera is having no effect on the exposure. And with these lights in the background, I thought it looked really cool. I was really impressed with how well uh, this shot came out. So it's very well exposed on him. Uh, he's not too overblown or anything like that, but yeah, he's got this great lighting coming down where you can see his muscles. Uh, and yet you've got these uh, lights in the background. So even at 350 of a second, they were still bright enough to come out. Uh, let's see if we bring the blacks down. That brings him up. We could probably do a little bit of recovery for his face. Uh, uh, if we bring the exposure right up, that's what the room looks like. Obviously, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, but yeah, just there. So press... That's so we see what is totally black. There, that can be totally black. Let's bring that down to there. And exposure, bring that back down there. So yeah, so that's kind of exactly how I wanted it. I think that looks really good. Clarity, probably bring that up. It's good to like that one a lot. Thick. Again, here, as you can see, the colors are just starting to change. So there's a little bit of purple coming through as well. Uh, and that's just the dish, just on top of the flash, and it's all controlled by my camera's tiny little flash. So that looks cool as well, I like that one a lot. What I might do is maybe increase the vibrance as well, because uh, that would be quite cool. It's like there, no colour, there, lots of colour. It makes it a little bit warmer as well. So the flash um, white balance is around about 5,500. If we bring it up, now it looks hot. If we bring it below, it looks a bit cooler. Uh, I think 6,000 might be a bit too hot. Yeah, just a little bit higher. Uh, it's almost a bit too much, I think. But either way, cool. Vibrance, maybe not up to 100. Uh, saturation, don't think you ever really want to play with that because that really screws up skin tone. Uh, so that's good. Maybe curved. I know we want to do. I meant to be picking. That's later on. Uh, again, so that was the same shot, uh, but the background lights just were missing. So there, like, <laughs> doing this dance moves. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here I put one of my other flashes onto the ground now. So again, I'm just holding the flash in my right hand side, but I put one of the flashes on the ground and put a red gel in front of the flash. So that would give this red colour. And I thought the red with the blue with uh, Vince really worked well. He tried one of his hats, or I don't think it's his hats, one of the hats we took from the people that were selling their stuff and uh, tried to see if that worked. But it didn't, we didn't really like the hat. Now here, this is a shot which I do like a lot, but there's a huge problem with it. And that is, A, the walls in the background aren't very clean, so that's going to take a long time to Photoshop that up so that's nice and tidy. Secondly, on his face, the shadow that's being cast by his arm here, by this arm here, is casting a shadow from the light which is bouncing off the wall here and is coming back and hitting his face and he's got this big black shadow coming right down his face and it's like damn I'm so close to being a really what well, I would have been really happy with um, but it's just this shadow and that and just that redness is just too strong if I bring the vibrance down it just, just doesn't quite work because I kind of want to keep the skin tones but just take out the reds 
So what it could do is if I show you over here, we've got this bit here where you can change the saturation, the luminance and all that kind of stuff. And if we click on this little button here, that means we can select a part of the image, so let's say here, and if we drag it down, it will take down those colours. So that's kind of taking out the reds, but I wanted the reds, that's the thing. It's, uh, it's just tough. I might bring them down just a little bit there. That is kind of okay. Damn. Anyway, like that one, keep that one. A uh, couple more shots like that one. Yeah, again, shadow is just too much uh, on him. If we do some light fill to get rid of the shadow, oh, no, that's recovery. Light fill, it just looks too noisy. Uh, it just doesn't quite work. Damn it. This one, really cool. Just kind of this hot, sexy look uh, to the image. We've got all this flare that's coming from uh, the flash down below. It looks. You wouldn't tell that he's in just kind of a nightclub or anything here. I think that's kind of a pretty cool image there. I like that one a lot. Okay, colours in the background changed to green. Not as big a fan of them as I was with the blue. Uh, we're just like bashing out shot after shot. That one was quite cool, like that one. Blue cool lights and stuff there. I like that one. Unfortunately, I think it's a little bit blurry on him. Uh, that one, not a huge fan of this one, because if you look at the shadows on the chest, they're really picking up the light that's coming from below, and flashing or lights from below that give shadows like that never look good. And same with the face, you've now got a shadow coming up from his nose. That's never a good look, uh, so I'm not going to be using that one. Here we try to work with the tie, uh, didn't really work there. Cool colours. Bad idea. Okay, yeah, that one, that, I like that one. That was good. He's in the middle, he's looking strong and powerful. I've got the red to the right, the blue lights to the left. I love the kind of contrast of colours um, and just the, the strength of him in there. I think that looks a good one. I like that one. Shadows aren't too bad on him either. That's kind of a cool one as well. I like that one. Okay, so I was asking him to try and do some like Kung Fu poses or positions. Neither of us do Kung Fu or anything like that, so we didn't really have any idea. Uh, there you can see the, the beauty dish in the background uh, reflecting off one of the lights. So I had to change my position there so that it wasn't reflecting off there. Uh, yeah, no, not that great, not that great. Dance poses, dance poses. Ah, and then we went on to Abby, did some shots of her, got her. She was, again, a wee bit too close to the background, so the shadow is directly behind her, uh, so I like that one, it's okay. Uh, but then this one, you've got this, I think it's a speaker up in the background, not a fan of that, but I do like the lighting on her. So I think, in, I'll pick this one, and what I'll do is I'll just do a quick crop, take that down, done, and that's it sorted. So yeah, definitely keep that one, keep that one. Uh, do I like that one? She might like that one, especially if I crop it down. Because uh, the lighting on her looks good, it's almost butterfly lighting just coming underneath her nose there. So the flash is obviously almost directly at the same angle as her face. And let's see, zoom out. Uh, that's kind of mid shot. Here, yeah, so here she's working on kind of more characterful, characterful images. Uh, and here she's biting on her gold chain. Uh, yeah, I like that one. And there with the green in the back. Green here, I think, is a good complementing colour. Uh, the green and the red uh, with her and her green top looks good, so I like that one. And then she said she wanted to get some full body shots, so with this I put the flashes uh, way at either side. So there is one flash behind and to the right, as you can clearly see by the shadow down here. And there's another flash just off to the left, uh, which might not have gone off in this image. Um, and then me just using my beauty dish uh, in front of her uh, at a fairly strong power. Uh, yeah, so I like that one. I like that one as well. Yep, yeah, these are all quite good. So it's her kind of doing these kind of crazy uh, looks. I thought it was quite fun and interesting. Uh, good shot, unfortunately. Random person in the background walking past. Uh, so, won't be choosing that one. And then here I tried to put a, a red flash in the background to give more of an interesting colour, but didn't really work for me. That one looks good. That one doesn't look quite so good. That one's good. I like the lighting on this one. It almost looks like she's starting to be superimposed in the location. Again, huge amounts of flare, 
great lighting on her. I love the look of it. If this one just increases the contrast a bit, I think that will look pretty sweet. I love this kind of weird, you know, lighting artifact that you get from the lens and then the little dot over here. That looks really cool. It's also slightly overexposed on her face. We were still shooting at 350th of a second. Um, but overexposing her face is great because it's really smoothed out anything and it gives her kind of much more of a... Well, she's not really wanting a softer complexion or anything like that, but it, I think it just looks kind of better, slightly overexposed. So I like that one. Here again with the lights from behind, so you've got a red giving, you can see the red light just behind her, and with the light from the right hand side there, it looks like she's superimposed. It looks like this nightclub in the background isn't actually there because the lighting on her is so different compared to what is in the background, which I think is kind of cool. And she liked that as well. There you can see the beauty dish right in her face. That's, so that's the kind of distance that I'm working with, uh, with the beauty dish. Uh, again, I kind of like that one, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I think she's just out of focus there, not going for that one. Like that one again. Okay, so now uh, Vince and I did some more shots, and we're trying to work with a really slow shutter speed uh, and movement. So here, look, I'm going at a tenth of a second, as you can see up here, tenth of a second, F16, so the flash is having to pump out a lot of power, and just working with a single flash. This is just the beauty dish uh, in my hand to the right. And what I was doing is just moving the camera to the left, and as you can see, it's given this cool kind of movement to the image here, and you can see the lights in the background have also slightly changed and moved. Um, but not a bit, that one's a bit better. Unfortunately, he's now slightly out of focus there. Um, because again, when you're doing this and you're moving the camera, if you have it on a continuous focusing thing, it might not stay focused in the right bit. Uh, I like this one here, it almost seems like it's in a kind of a, a smoky, hazy place. I think uh, for this one, I was coming down the way, as you can see with the effect of his uh, arm there. So that was quite cool, I like that one. Here I was doing a rotation one, uh, so that's why you can see in the background, it's kind of twisted around like that. Uh, and you can see, you can actually see the rotation in the shape of the single lights that were in the background. Uh, again, kind of looks cool, almost looks like it's already been photoshopped with the kind of blur that's going on around here. So yeah, I like that one, I think that looks quite cool. Here it almost looks like the lights are actually coming out of his head. Uh, again, looks like kind of Photoshop action has been done here, but no, that's just all out of camera. So yeah, that was quite cool. So then I think we're getting even slower here. This is at a quarter of a second. Uh, a lot more kind of lights coming out of him, uh, but unfortunately it also makes him more blurry. Uh, oh, I like that one, that was quite cool. The lots of blue lights coming out. So we really worked on just trying to do it as slow as possible and then it's just getting too, too slow. Uh, that was good, I like that one. Oh, that one's cool. Lots of movement, lots of action in that one. All his clothes are moving, you've got lights coming out everywhere. I like that one a lot. I like his kind of more kind of looking down, kind of pensive look. And then we thought we'll do some kind of arm movement ones where uh, almost looks like his arms have disappeared. So here we started using st uh, strobe effect or the repeating flash on the camera. So originally I think this one was just a single flash. As you can see his arms have kind of in two different places. But yet he is looking fairly sharp, so that's good. And then this is what happens when you have the strobe effect or the repeating flash. He's now got eyes all over his face. It looks like he looks like a mutant there. Um, so this is where I have to be super slow or super still with my camera, and he also has to be super still with his face and his body and just move his arms. As you can see here, loads of action going on. It, it's, it's pretty much a multiple exposure. It still is just one photo, but it's going on for a quarter of a second and the flash is shot uh, definitely two times uh, in that image. And I've obviously rotated it as well. Kind of like that one, even though it's a bit weird. Again, two shots um, in the same image. Almost looks like he's a Siamese twin there. Not going to use that. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, and then, okay, here... So obviously three shots have managed to go off there, um, but now he's totally blurry, he's underexposed, it's not looking good. Uh, here you've got four or five arms are kind of fading off into nothing, so he's certainly like that uh, Leonardo da Vinci, or is it? Okay, so then we went to another room, and 
uh, I was lying on the floor and we're looking up to the ceiling where it's got this kind of cool glitter ball ceiling uh, look. I put a flash on the table just behind what he was standing on. So that, as you can see, is uh, reflecting off the roof behind him. And that's given this kind of halo effect there. Or not a halo, but more of a light coming from behind him, like that one. Uh, and just trying to get shots of where he's leaning over uh, and it doesn't look just too weird. Uh, unfortunately, again, with it being a, a highly ref reflective roof, um, the flashes kind of got a little bit confused about who was meant to be more powerful. So I had to quickly put some exposure compensation on the flash in my hand, make sure that was like maybe a plus two setting there. Because uh, any time a flash reflected off the uh, ceiling, it would come back and the camera would just kind of go, whoa, that's too bright. So here's Eleanor uh, doing the same kind of angles as well, getting some shots. As you can see, we've got some red over to the right hand side, uh, getting some shots, that looks good. And then we just did some more where she's kind of sitting down. That was nice. Some comedy shots at the same time. Now look at the the lights in her eyes, she's got lots of lights there. Okay, if you look really carefully, you can see my beauty dish going off there, again at 350 of a second, but you can also see the red flash in the background, which I forgot to turn off. If we, let's see if we go in. Yeah, it's a little red flash there, which I forgot to turn off. I like that one. Oh, out of focus. Okay, here, so I, so I brought the red and the blue flash, put them behind, uh, so shooting onto the, the seat, uh, cool pattern that the seat has got. And again, just flash in my hand uh, to give it some nice kind of butterfly lighting uh, going on to her there, like that one. There, her head was turned too much, it sounded like she was trying to listen to someone. And then there's a little bit better there, so I like that one. Yeah, so that was kind of cool, got cool lighting effects, all Nikon CLS lighting system. Uh, uh, Vincent saw the image which I'd done of Abby in the previous shots and he said, Don't, how do you do that? How do you get that so there's a whole shadow coming out there? So again, flash over to the right, flash over to the left, both behind him. One's a bit more stronger, giving all that light there, and then the flash in my hand, uh, giving the kind of proper exposure on his face there. So that's quite cool. That's a mid-dance mid pose. So again, some shots of people getting their stuff done. And then this is the... Uh, modeling again later on. Again, uh, because I was doing quite a lot of shots fairly quickly in rapid succession, sometimes my camera flash didn't have time to recharge, so there's quite a few ones where it'd be nice photo, nice photo, black, um, just because I've been shooting a bit too quickly. So that's good there. There's Abby. There's all three of them. Couple of shots there, good. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Although that's obviously not meant to, that's just the lighting in the actual place. Yeah, that's a nice little group shot. Nice little group shot. Group shot as well. And another group shot. Yeah, keep all of them. Uh, focus. Loving the, the geek sheet glasses there. <laughs> Brilliant shots. Always a uh, Terry Richardson kind of look there. Cotton headlights. Uh, that's her. She's doing some nice little walking. Yeah, good. Pretty much just the on camera flash. Well, I had the SB900 on camera uh, for these shots um, here. Geek chic. And then group shot of them there, crop that a little bit, this one, a little bit out of focus on the right, nope, on the left hand side, uh, yeah. Okay, and that's uh, Lee, the girl that was organising it, in her outfit. That was the girl which I was taking photos of earlier on in the day, um, remember her hair kind of being the way that it was. That's a cool shot, I like that one, that's kind of straight on bunny in the headlights look. Lighting wise. Okay, so here's some of the uh, head, head uh, what do you call them, fascinator things um, by Mary Brunning. Uh, that's, uh, you'll 
may have remember I did a video with her fascinators in the past. Don't think I ever used that one. That was pretty impressive fascinator there. Uh, but again, in the posh grunge shoot, that was the one where I used these shots. Uh, so yeah, get a shot of that. She'll be happy with those. That is an impressive amount of feathers or whatever it is. Yep. So a lot of these will probably, I'll, I'll crop them a little bit more. Yeah, like that one. Oh, good model pose there. Uh, it's out of focus, camera didn't keep up. Good, good. Yeah, nice pose there. And then that's the group of them. Where do we get a nice? Oh yeah, they're having to show Mary Running's fascinators there. Yeah, that's a nice one. And then here's the kind of army jacket shots again. Yeah, good, good. Quick change. So there you can see my flashes in the background kind of going off everywhere, brightening up the whole place. <laughs> Vincent pulling some poses. And then that's group shots. Just at the bottom right here, you can see that there's a lot of glare um, and that's just from the flash being very, very close. So I just quickly moved myself one step closer and changed, I think I changed the focal length as well, maybe. Um, that looks better there. Okay, then so I did individual shots of everyone, doing the full body uh, kind of image um, with all their outfits to try and get everything here. So again, just off camera flash here with uh, the beauty dish again. And... Uh, an off-camera flash off to the right. I think they're both shooting at TTL. Uh, so yeah, just a shot of her. Her with jacket, her with out jacket. Cool, 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 cool. So I'm happy with the exposure on the people which are shooting for all of these. And I love the flare kind of going on there. Uh, yeah, good, 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 good. Pick. Pick, 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 pick. Boyfriend and girlfriend there, and then that's two sisters that organised it. At least I think they're sisters. Good, and, and that's how it's finished. Woohoo! Okay, sorry that's been incredibly long. Anyway, that's the first part of the, the editing process. I would normally do that a little bit quicker because I wouldn't be explaining different type of shots. Uh, and then once I've done that, Go to the library and then go to this little bit down here, which is custom filter, and then go to flagged, which just means picked. So now you can see I've only got 182 photos to go through for my cropping and my editing uh, out of the 557. So I would say that that's a good amount to try and figure out what I want to do with them. 182, so that is a good, what's that, a quarter or something? A third? Something about that. Um, of shots which I'm happy with. Uh, once the next step from here, I'm not going to bother uh, videoing this because it's far too long, is uh, then editing, white balancing, um, uh, contrasting, increasing, background stuff taken away and all that. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of the day. Uh, so yeah, so that was the first part. Uh, so that's my workflow uh, of how I go through it and how I think about what I look for in images. Hope that helped. Cheers, bye-bye.